Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Band Together Leadership Seminars. My name is Paul Everts. I'm the founder and CEO of Band Together. You can reach me at my email address, which is B-A-N-D, the number two, together, band together at Comcast.net. You can also go to my handsome website, if I do say so myself, conductingmylife.com, where you go to the tab of curriculum and you'll see all the wonderful John Maxwell curricula or curriculum that I can uh, teach. I've been given a chance to be a speaker, trainer, coach. I can work with uh, one on one. I can do secular groups. I can do sacred groups. I can, whatever group you need, I'm there for you. The idea is to make better people become better leaders and we definitely need to have better better people we need better leaders we are living in chaos right now um by the way shout out to todd with 1d uh, i'm glad you're watching because you uh the comments that you made were really um spiteful but you know what that's why i have christ so then i can look at you todd with 1d and uh say god bless you and uh thanks for watching Anybody else who has comments, make sure you write them down. Um, I'm learning how to do this. It might not be your cup of tea. Uh, to, uh, today, I'm going to go again into the Bible. Uh, if you look at my previous uh, YouTube episodes, I've done both secular and sacred material, I would say. And uh, I'm looking at... I had a great conversation the other day, yesterday, with our soon-to-be new ethnic studies teacher. And um, I think what we need to do is to understand both sides of the truth. Um, ethnic studies to me, and it's always been here. I don't think people know that. Ethnic studies is not new. We were studying it back in the 1980s and 1990s. I know, that was like the 20th century. I understand that. But as my wife pointed out to her, you know, one of the lessons that she learned in her college level ethnic studies, not high school, college, anyway, it was, um, there are a reason why two men hold hands in San Francisco, and that reason is different than two men holding hands in, let's say, Saudi Arabia. Or if a person's actually visiting from Saudi Arabia, male, we're talking about men now, George Bush is a famous picture of George Bush holding the Saudi prince's hand. That is ethnic studies to me. It's understanding what other cultures are about. And right now, we are hearing so much negative stuff about CRT, and definitely ethnic studies. It's a slippery road, people. It's a slippery road. Um, I, I would suggest that you, before you get mad on either side that you talk to people. I really appreciate Catherine. Catherine did a great job. I, I, I did a great job too, frankly. We, were, we should have recorded it because it was civil discourse. Um, I don't believe in white privilege. I'll just say it right now. I, I, I'm a welfare kid. I'm a Medicare kid. Uh, didn't have too much privilege back when it was a single mom in the 1970s. I didn't feel much privilege then. Um, however, when I'm talking to my former students who happen to be black, uh, I understand why they feel there's white privilege. I understand that. Um, probably could have had some white privilege back in the 1970s. Anyway, um, but today we're going to talk about integrity some more. We're going to do this out of the book of Job. Um, and it's entitled, Our Lives our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Um, and it's about integrity. And, it, you know, when you see the triangle, which is right here, and I'm always going to use the triangle, that's my life. Uh, those five words, respect, responsible, discipline, integrity, and faith equals love. And, and that's what I'm doing. I'm doing this out of love. Um, so when I'm telling you, I'm not here to convert anybody. I'm not here to prove I'm right and you're wrong or... And I'm not expecting you to prove me wrong. What I'm expecting is there's three over 320 million people in this nation. And if we're not careful, we are going to see a real bad event happen in our nation. The one thing that should be keeping us together are the Founding Fathers documents. Not the color, not their genitalia, what they wrote. All right. That's that. That that. All that should be colorblind. The Constitution's colorblind. The Declaration of Independence colorblind. The Bill of Rights colorblind. Federalist Papers, Anti-Federalist Papers, colorblind. Look at the content. Look at read Thomas Paine. Common sense. Look at it. These are human principles we can live with. And to see it being under attack right now, which I consider it to be, 
It's sad to me. So let's go ahead and start. Our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Job is the oldest book in the Bible, which I did not know. The first book written. Job is believed to have lived at the same time as Abraham, and therefore long before early Bible heroes such as Moses. The book begins with an interesting meeting. The sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. God proudly pointed out to Satan his faithful servant Job. But Satan argued that Job was devoted only because God had, quote, made a hedge about him and his house and all that he has on every side, and blessed and increased his possessions. God knew otherwise. So he allowed Satan to touch all that Job had, which Satan did, destroying Job's family and his property. But God was right. Job remained faithful. Through all this, Job did not sin, nor did he blame God. Chapter 1, verse 22. The second chapter begins like the first, with Satan again showing up at a meeting of the sons of God. Chapter 2, verse 1. <clears throat> God challenged him that despite what had happened, Job, quote, still holds fast his integrity. Chapter 2, verse 3. But Satan claimed Job would change if his physical health was touched. God, again, knew otherwise and allowed Satan to touch his health. Job remained steadfast, which infuriated Job's wife, who chided him, Do you still hold fast your integrity? Curse God and die. Job chapter 2, verse 9. He didn't. Later, Job's friends arrived, convinced that he must have sinned to bring this upon him and thus needed to repent. They accused him, attempting to induce guilt and change his view, but he stood firm, announcing, quote, Till I die, I will not put away my integrity from me. Job chapter 27, verse 5. God, highly pleased with Job, poured out double blessings on Job. Notice the emphasis in his marriage on integrity. To God, integrity is an indispensable necessity for his children. A fact clearly affirmed by Psalm 15, verse 1, queries, O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell in your holy hill? God answers this question by describing the character of those who will reside with him, including, in verse 4, those who keep their word no matter the cost, people who walk with integrity. God even promises special blessings for those who live by integrity. That would be Proverbs 10, 9, 11, 3, and 20, verse 7. With such a clear emphasis on integrity throughout the Bible, it is not surprising that the Founding Fathers considered integrity to be the highest human virtue. Signer of the Declaration, Benjamin Rush, who also started the Sunday School Movement in America and America's first Bible Society, Benjamin Rush noted, I think I have observed that integrity in the conduct of both the living and the dead takes a stronger hold of the human heart than any other virtue. The lessons of history as well as own personal experience had taught him that an individual, whether dead or, or living, was most often remembered for his integrity or lack there of integrity, as in the case of Benedict Arnold the once highly lauded American military leader and a hero of the Battle of Saratoga, who will always be remembered for his act of betrayal, breach of integrity. But what is integrity? Fortunately, Dr. Rush provided a concise definition. He said, by integrity I mean veracity, devotion to the truth, Fidelity to promises, 
and a strict coincidence between thoughts, words, and actions. Notice especially the latter part of the definition. Integrity exists when there is consistency between what one thinks, says, and does when actions actually match words. Inspiringly, <laughs> that's a good one, inspiringly, integrity is a trait that was readily vis visible in the signers of the Declaration. When they penned that document and listened the, listed the principles of sound government, as well as violations of them by the British, the founders announced that to secure their objective, quote, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. They gave their word to sacrifice all they had in order to achieve the goals they had set forth in the Declaration. It is certainly impressive to make such an eloquent rhetorical promise, but it is quite a different matter to fulfill it especially when doing so will place your very life at stake. But as history demonstrates, the signers of the Declaration were indeed men of integrity. They kept their word and at a high cost. In fact, 19 of the 56 signers put on a military uniform and went to war. Two died at the hands of the British seven others died during the war and two were wounded in battle and including those signers who also led in arenas outside the military five were made prisoners of war 17 lost their estates or fortunes five incurred heavy debt by personally financing the war 14 lost their families or were separated from them two lost children, and three lost their wives. There is not a single record or recorded instance of any of the 56 refusing to deliver on his promise. Securing independence truly was costly for the signers, all of them. As John Adams acknowledged, posterity, you will never know how much it cost the present generation to preserve your freedom. I hope you will make a good use of it. If you do not, I shall repent it in heaven that I ever took half the pains to preserve it. Integrity is important, and the signers of the Declaration and numerous Bible heroes, including Job, Daniel, Joseph, Jesus, and so many others, demonstrated integrity. But how was integrity achieved? Joseph's story provided the answer. Joseph's story grew up in the American Revolution. His father was one of the quote-unquote Indians in the Boston Tea Party, appointed to the United States Supreme Court by President James Madison. Story is known as a, quote, father of American Jewish prudence, unquote. Justice Story was very clear about how integrity is attained, explaining, to secure integrity, there must be a lofty sense of duty and a deep responsibility to future times as well as to God. Integrity is born out of the awareness of deep sense of answerability to God. Recall that before the signers of the Declaration pledged their lives, fortunes, and sacred honor, they first declared their, quote, firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, capital D, divine, capital P, providence. If there is not a genuine mindfulness of God and accountability to God, there is no real reason to keep one's word. When we know that we will give a full account to God and that God will either reward or punish us for the performance of our word, that awakens a clear incentive. If we desire to please God, we will keep our word no matter the cost. And why not? 
That is what is to be like God. Integrity is God's chief characteristic. After all, since the dawn of creation, in the renewing of God's covenant with us, he pledged his own life, his entire fortune, and did so on his own sacred honor. We have redemption because God kept his word, even though it cost the life of his own precious son to do so. He is a God of integrity. He does not make excuses. He keeps promises every time. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. He is the founder. He is the finisher of our faith. Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. And as his children, God has left us with a glorious promise that through, quote, it is not appeared as yet what will, what we shall be. We know that when he appears, we will be like him because we will see him just as he is. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. Oh, the riches of the life for those who choose to follow, to fix their gaze upon God and walk in integrity. May your word be your bond and may God be the glue by which you stick to it. <sighs> you made it this far the last 16 minutes. Thank you so much for not turning it off. It would be best if we were to listen to each other and learn from each other. It would be best to understand that this nation is, with all its imperfections, has fixed many imperfections. I know we're stuck on race, ethnicity, and gender. We're stuck on it right now. I'd rather have you be stuck on respect, responsible, discipline, integrity, and faith equals love. Those words see no ethnicity, no gender. They see no race. They see human beings full of love. Having love, you need to be responsible. Having love, you need to have a sense of respect, don't you? It takes discipline to love somebody because there's going to be times when you're not going to like them. Are you the father in my case that you want to be? Are you living up to the father's standards? And if you're not a believer, I'm really thankful you stayed. Those words, again, are not held through people who are believers of God. There are plenty of believers of God who are disrespectful, who are irresponsible, who lack self-discipline, who lie through their teeth, and who just mock their faith. There's plenty of godly people. Godly, in quotes. So let me just leave you with this. Begin with the end in mind. Every choice you make is who you are. Choose wisely. Seek first to understand and be understood. That's what I'm doing with ethnic studies. That's what I'm doing with critical race theory. I'm studying my Marxism. I'm trying to sit there and go, are you sure you want to go down that slippery slope? There's a phrase, unintended consequences. Seek first to understand and then be understood. And then finally, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. I care about you very much and I care about my grandson and I'm going to dedicate every episode of my YouTube to my grandchildren and to my son and to my daughter and to my daughter-in-law because I want them to see this and take note that I did what I could and I got to 50 to 100 people. Fine. Hopefully those 50 to 100 people get to somebody else and then finally I'm doing the best I can. I'm doing the best I can. Really, I am doing the best I can. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope this helps somebody. Be A and D, number two together at Comcast.net, conductingmylife.com. Okay, I love you. Thanks for the support. Bye.